so in today's session uh, we will be discussing about the next concept of your big data analytics that is about your hadoop so as discussed in the previous session uh, i told that big data is one important uh, thing which is actually ruling the uh, software industry now with uh, with a key features in that like uh, hadoop is one important framework uh, which is addressing the problems of your big data so talking about the problems of your big data so basically uh the word big data only is a problem because uh, it deals with huge amount of data and also variety of your data likewise uh, also different different structures of your data so uh, because all these are the problems for the traditional systems we need to address these challenges or problems or limitations of traditional tools for that reasons we need some advanced tool called as which was developed uh, called as your hadoop so we can call hadoop as a uh, software programming framework so uh, remember this uh, point guys it's a framework because it is bundled with n number of tools when i talk about the word called as hadoop hadoop actually uh, equip equips with hundreds of tools but what is the main purpose of this hadoop the main purpose of this hadoop is for storing large amount of data and performing computations parallelly that is the main theme of this hadoop so we can use uh, n number of tools with respect to that but all these tools will be uh, working on the same area called as either it can be storage or it can be processing or uh, performing some computation operations with respect to your stored data that is the main uh, theme of developing this hadoop and with respect to that there are many tools being developed we'll discuss about that in today's session while discussing about hadoop ecosystem okay yeah so as i said uh, in yesterday's session the the main prerequisite to learn hadoop is java with respect to your databases the knowledge of databases is mandatory if you want to learn your hadoop yeah so hadoop is a framework which is based on java programming with some native code in c and shell scripts so as i said yesterday while discussing about uh, unit 3 and unit 4 uh, we will be writing some big scripts so you need to have understanding of your linux properly for your shell scripts and also the basics of your c language are also should be very good if you want to work with your big data uh, technology called as your hadoop yeah so uh, why why hadoop has got much prominence why is is hadoop the only tool to so solve these problems because basically people try to develop n number of things hadoop might not be the only solution for this problem there might be n number of tools which may try to address this challenge but why every everybody is concentrating on hadoop the main reason is it is an open source tool so any user or anybody can try to uh, try to download that and you can install that in your machine and start working with your hadoop but the only only limitation or the only necessity Uh, what is required if you want to install hadoop is you need to have a high end machine that is at least an 8 gb of ram and i5 processor is compulsory if you want to install your hadoop in your single node machine that's the reason uh, due to the limitations of this single node machines we have uh, gone for your hadoop cluster so if i am talking about your hadoop cluster so there will be having high end computation machines and that will be useful for running n number of processes parallelly so if you want to install hadoop in a single node machine you need to have the minimum equipment like uh, 8 gb of ram and also some uh, good processing machine that's why uh, people like normal users cannot actually install hadoop if you want to install hadoop also you need to have a basic networking uh, idea about how to install them so because it is a bundle of n number of tools you need to parallelly run n number of commands okay yeah so uh, hadoop is an open source software framework used to develop data processing applications which are executed in a distributed computing network or environment yeah so as i said study about your hdfs that is hadoop distributed file system so basically if i talk about hadoop distributed file system we're talking about the distributed nature of your data yeah one second okay so uh, yeah so we'll be discussing about that in today's session like how hadoop is distributed why data preprocessing is done parallelly what are the benefits of learning this hadoop 
how hadoop has uh, got much more prominence than other tools the main reason is because it is a open source network and it actually requires the basics of your java and your databases every software engineer basically has this uh, knowledge and everybody will be easily understanding this type of things that's the reason hadoop has got much more prominence than other tools yeah so who has developed this hadoop why the name hadoop has been given uh, to that so we'll try to learn about this and later we'll try to learn about what is the history of development of hadoop in with respect to a number of years yeah so uh, basically hadoop is developed by a software team uh, uh, called as your apache software uh, foundation is the organization where uh, there a, a group of people has uh, found this tool called as your hadoop yeah the developers of this apache has uh, basically invented this hadoop and uh, the main person behind this development of hadoop is doug cutting and mike kafarelia these are the names uh, you need to remember with respect to your uh, hadoop so the, the main person among these two also is about your doug cutting so if somebody asks you who has developed uh, hadoop you can simply say the, the name also has been given by this person called as doug cutting why the name has been given as hadoop so here uh, Whenever, whenever you see about your Hadoop, uh, with respect to uh, Hadoop, you will be having a small elephant photo also uh, covered through your Hadoop. In yesterday session also, while displaying about Hadoop cluster, I have shown that you, a, a small uh, elephant logo will be available as part of that name. So that is the representation or uh, the icon for this Hadoop. So basically, the name Hadoop is nothing but a, a name of a elephant, which is uh, which is uh, with the toy, the toy name of the elephant, which is played by the dog's cutting, dog cutting's son. So that depending on that name, he has given the name as Hadoop. That's it, guys. Nothing uh, more about why this name has been given. All those things. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, in depth about what is Hadoop. Uh, and before this, I want to just give you understanding of uh, what is the history of this Hadoop. So later we will try to discuss about uh, the architects, all those things. We will try to understand how actually this idea came into uh, uh, market and why this name has been given, and also how this serves the purpose of your uh, uh, market. That's that's very important thing to understand. So basically, while uh, people of Apache uh, are trying to work about distributed nature of your data, they are trying to understand about distributed nature of your data. And in the year 2002, Dow Cutting and Mike uh, started a work on Apache Nuts project. Later, later they, they started working on that with the team, and finally they reached to a, a good phase, and they moved to Yahoo. Uh, later, Yahoo adopted this, and uh, that's how uh, Hadoop came into market. So uh, this all work started in the year 2002, and from 2002 only the trials of this uh, development and all these things are started. In 2003, Google released a paper on Google File System. That is the uh, at that time Google was uh, trying to dis uh, work on distributed file system. In the same manner, they have uh, developed a, a file system called as Google File System to describe how to store large data sets. So because at that time uh, there was not much more equipment available as part of any industry, Google tried to invest uh, uh, invest for different file systems. And in 2003. they started uh, they have released this google file system and that was very useful for these people also to understand about distributed nature of your data so in 2004 google uh, released another paper on map reduce technique which is uh, a parallel processing or distributed processing on your large data sets okay yeah so uh, in 2004 again google released another paper on map reduce uh, and uh, 2005 again uh dog cutting started using this google file system and map reduce and he tried to combine these two things and uh tried to adopt adopt these two things and he uh, why why should we use two different things like we need to use a file system separately and we need to use a processing separately why we need to do separately why can't i combine into single phase that's how the idea of hadoop came and that's the reason yesterday i said that when i talk about hadoop it's nothing but a combination of your databases and also your processing so if you are if you are good uh, if you are uh, trained well with hadoop it means that you are able to process your data you are able to store your data you are able to work with your data in n number of ways likewise in the year uh, 
year by year they have developed lot of things and in the 2007 uh, dow cutting finally uh, gave the name as your uh, hadoop which 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 is a distributed computing uh, area so in the in the year 2008 uh, yahoo successfully tested uh, hadoop on 1000 node cluster so yesterday i said that uh, mlrit college is having a nine node cluster in the same that is the basic requirement of our organization so we have purchased a nine node cluster in the same manner depending on the uh, data what they are having yahoo uh, in the year 2008 only they have tested hadoop on 1000 node cluster and it was some success yet yeah, then in the july in the month of july after uh, some 4 to 5 months of effort yahoo released hadoop as an open source project because there is a continuous development going on uh, with respect to your hadoop it is still under open source because anybody can contribute th to that it's not only that only one can use anybody who is trying to develop anything they can contribute to your apache software foundation the where you'll be having some discussion forums you'll be having some uh, uh, separate names for your projects and anybody can contribute to that that's how uh, there were n number of tools available as part of your hadoop with respect to your apache software foundation yeah so in the in the year 2009 hadoop was successfully tested to sort a petabytes data also so in the 2008 they have uh, installed this 1000 node cluster and in the 2009 they started working with the petabytes of data in less than 17 hours that was a good achievement so previously it would take some days of time to process some petabytes of data but now because of this setup of hadoop cluster it took only 17 hours for them to process some petabytes of data also it was the first commercial distribution of hadoop uh, at that time so in, in 2010 further com commercial things has been developed so the number of the time span also got reduced hadoop has become much more efficient than the previous things in 2011 uh, apache software foundation has finally released this apache hadoop that is hadoop version 1 so from 2002 from 2002 to 2010 that was the struggle of this development of this hadoop so there were n number of people equipped with that but dow cutting uh, is the name we need to remember because he has come up with this idea and he was the person who has who has done lot of things to develop this hadoop so in 2011 we got the hadoop version 1 so later uh, we got hadoop version 2 and now uh, we are using hadoop version uh, 3.2 so likewise there are n number of updates being processed and now uh, because in 2000 and hadoop version 1 there was uh, there was map reduce and hdfs there are combined as a single place only so later because of the overload of the data and all those stuff uh, map reduce has uh, separately uh, formed separate thing and they have uh, they have made processing as separate mechanism why why with that uh, with introduction of yarn as a different component so if you want to manage your cluster map reduce was not able to do that so they have come up with a new component called as yarn so we will discuss about that all those things in the upcoming slides so i can say this is the rough history which we need to remember uh, with respect to your hadoop okay yeah so i hope uh, these points are clear guys so this ppt is also will be shared and that will be useful for you to recall your concepts for the upcoming sessions yeah so now uh, let's talk about quickly about the hadoop architecture so how hadoop is able to process huge amount of data and parallelly uh, it is trying to store and process the data so when i talk about hadoop you need to remember about two important things two important names one is hdfs hadoop distributed file system other one is map reduce these two are the core components of your hadoop even though you are having hundreds of tools as part of your hadoop you need to remember these two names that will be the base parts of your hadoop the other tools whatever they, they are going to be developed those all tools will be on top of these two layers only without these two layers the other tools the other, other tools whatever are being developed will not be much useful okay yeah so you can see at the bottom you are having your hdfs which is hadoop distributed file system where you will store your data so because you are storing huge amount of data there should be some processing uh, or there should be some mechanism to store your data properly in a well arranged manner that's the reason uh, hadoop uh, in the hadoop architecture 
we have five important uh, demons demons which is run in the background so you can see the names here uh, like master node and slave nodes so you will be having your uh, name node as your master node job tracker also will be your master node also task tracker and uh, accordingly you will be having your data node so here you are having only four names but there will be one more uh, one more name called as your secondary name node which will be the backup for your name node among all these five nodes a uh, name node will be acting as the master of all these nodes that is it will be the main component if suppose name node is not in a position to handle something immediately it will give the rights to your secondary name node that's how the data whatever is being stored and processed will not have breakage at any time that's why hadoop is much uh, very very uh, efficient and it is uh, easy to understand uh, hadoop because you will not have a uh, problem with hadoop because there is a uh, backup machine which uh, which always monitors the name node so if there is a problem with name node uh, because it is the core of your uh, hadoop if there is a problem with your name node immediately a backup of secondary name node will be activated and it will try to uh, it will try not to create any disturbances in your data work okay so uh, we'll discuss about all these things in your upcoming uh, uh, slides but as of now uh, whenever you are discussing about your hadoop you need to remember your two components that is hdfs and map reduce with respect to this you are having some demons yeah this is what i am talking about uh, demons of your hadoop one is name node which is uh, name node is the master node among all your nodes a uh, name node represented every uh, files and directory which is used in the namespace so all the data whatever you are going to store uh, in your hdfs those all data will be uh, stored and processed and maintained by your name node it is the master node of all the nodes and next uh, for every uh, for a name for a name node you will be having uh, a data nodes like n number of data nodes will be available so according to the work assigned to your name node it will try to distribute your work into for your data nodes so here you can see uh, data nodes are being available here so depending on the file what you are going to process suppose if i say uh, i am going to work with some 1 terabyte of data so name node will try to use some uh, 10 data nodes so depending on the uh, number of data nodes available name node will try to distribute your work that's how that's why it is called as your distributed uh, processing mechanism okay so name node will uh, try to trigger all these things and uh, so uh, name node uh, is the master node for all these things yeah so uh, the master node allows you to conduct parallel processing of data using your uh, map reduce that is so it is uh, the master node here is your job tracker the processing mechanisms will be carried out using your job tracker so if it is storage and all those aspects will be uh, carried out using your name node and the processing mechanisms that is your map reduce will be also handled by name node but the work will be assigned to your job tracker job tracker will try to assign works to its slaves that is your task tracker so once task tracker will try to complete its work it will try to uh, give the outputs to your job tracker and job tracker will update it to your master node called as your name node that's how processing will be uh, computed uh, with respect to your distributed nature so depending on the size of files what you are uploading to your uh, cluster or you are or you are giving to your processing mechanism it will try to manage itself we only need to uh, give some commands properly like what to be done and name node automatically does does things so master nodes duty is to distribute your data to your slave nodes slave nodes will try to uh, there will be uh, there will be only three masters as i said uh, name node secondary name node and job tracker these are the three masters available in any any hadoop cluster but there can be n number of slaves because according to the capacity of the machine what you are going to build there can be n number of slaves that's how Uh, master and slave nodes uh, can be uh, understood yeah so uh, you need to understand about these things guys this is the uh, architecture of your uh, hadoop cluster uh, what we have designed in your uh, in our college yeah give me one second okay 
so uh, you all can see this is the uh, cluster architecture what what is being developed in our college in mlr it so you are having your multi node hadoop cluster with nine nodes as i said uh, you will be having three masters secondary name node name node and job tracker here jt indicates your job tracker so as i said uh, in hadoop version 2 if you want to manage your resources you will need to have a resource manager that is yan y a r n get another resource negotiator which will be trying to see the condition the health condition of all these nodes so if any, any node is down immediately the resource manager will try to uh, give, give a notification that there is some problem with the uh, cluster or there is some problem with some some of the node that's the reason you need to check its health condition and make it stable that's how a resource manager will try to give all the resources from the system uh, capacity what you are having through yeah so uh, second name node will be the backup for your name node yeah and also resource manager will try to communicate with the name node and try to check the health condition of all the data nodes so here you can see uh, this is when i say this is as one node it is one cpu in our understanding so this is second cpu third cpu fourth cpu we can also call it as a one virtual machine it can be a virtual machine or it can be a cpu whatever you call them every uh, slave node we can call this a slave node will be having some capacity like suppose if i say uh, our architecture has 128 gb ram capacity the 128 gb ram capacity will be divided among all these nodes like you will be having some uh, 32 gb for your name node some 16 gb for secondary name node likewise it will be divided by the admin or the uh, main person who is developing the cluster will try to uh, divide this uh, 128 gb into parts and each slave node will be given some suppose like it can be 16 gb will be allocated to each slave nodes suppose if i am having some 256 gb of ram i can still increase that so according to the requirement what you are having or according to the availability resources what you are having you can increase your cluster components and accordingly you can try to uh, you can try to process your things so everybody need to uh, keep these things in your mind uh, the cluster architecture especially for the people who are trying to do your big data projects this is very important thing guys you need to have this in your mind always so these are the addresses what you are going to remember if you want to log in to your hadoop cluster and here at the end you can see uh, there is something called as your edge node where uh, you will be having user accesses so if i if i want to connect to my uh, hadoop cluster from anywhere i need to give this address like 172.16.103.68 and uh, once you log into that it will be asking for user id and password the credentials will be given by the admin and you can give the user id and password and connect to your cluster and uh, you can see here uh, name node and resource manager are indicated for your hdfs that is distributed data storage will be done using your hdfs so basically uh, these two also will be used for your map reduce uh, as i said you will be having your job tracker uh, which will be part of your processing mechanism that is distributed data processing will be done using your map reduce okay so a user will be connecting to uh, edge node directly from edge node we will be trying to access uh, or get all the things uh, to, from your name node okay yeah so i hope uh, this is clear guys uh, one second so uh, this is the cluster architecture guys what uh, what we have uh, when you have gone through just now yeah so you all need to remember this architecture because once you are talking about your major projects uh, or as part of your a uh, cluster you need to remember this structure how to log in and where to log in what are the important components to be logged in these all things we can uh, actually see once we are discussing about your lab so while discussing about your lab we definitely need to log in through your edge node and uh, once we are logged into edge node we can uh, with the knowledge of your linux and the basic java you can write your programs and execute them in your hadoop cluster okay so uh, talking about what are the features of hadoop uh, why hadoop is such a important component as part of big data so it is suitable for big data analysis yeah so uh, you can ask me one question like 
why RDBMS or uh, Oracle SQL are not suitable for big data analytics. So why can't they address the challenges of huge amount of data? Because so as per the data available uh, in market or in your social media, the data will mostly be unstructured data. The traditional systems, whatever you are having like RDBMS and Oracle will only try to uh, address the problems with respect to your structured data and that also with to some limitation. If I give some uh, petabytes of data to your SQL engine, it might generate results in, in number of days of time. It may not give you the results in quick span of time. So as you all know how you are going to use your social media, if I just give a click and go, I need to get my results. The need of a human being or any uh, in, uh, industry is like everything need to be available on a click. So if I want to get such type of uh, output from my uh, given me mechanism, definitely the traditional systems are not suitable for this purpose. That's the reason we need to go for some advanced mechanisms uh, for analysis. That's the reason we have come to your Hadoop, yeah. So as big data tends to distributed and unstructured in nature, Hadoop clusters are best suited for analysis of big data. So if you want to understand uh, unstructured data, and if you want to work with this unstructured data, you definitely need to work with your uh, Hadoop uh, mechanism. If you want to work with your structured data, RDBMS and Oracle might be suitable for you. But if you want to work with your unstructured data formats, you definitely need to work with your Hadoop. Yeah, because the processing mechanism or the processing speed of Hadoop is very fast because it is a distributed nature. Yeah, so uh, the concept of Hadoop is basically like it is a processing logic that follow that flows to the computing nodes. Less network bandwidth is consumed. This concept is called as data locality concept, which helps increase the efficiency of Hadoop based application because of the distributed nature of this Hadoop, the data can be easily located uh, using your name node. Uh, that's the reason the computations can be done very fastly uh, and quickly in very short span of time. Okay. Yeah. The next feature is the scalability of your Hadoop. That is Hadoop clusters can easily be scaled. So as I said in the previous uh, example only here, because of my limitations of my resources, we have gone through some nine node setup. Suppose if I say uh, I am having some 512 GB RAM with me, so I can go for n number of nodes. Here in place of uh, five data nodes, I'll be going for 10 data nodes. That's the reason Hadoop is scalable. You can uh, increase the size of your cluster according to the resources what you are having, and we call it as a scalability they can be easily scaled to any extent by adding additional cluster nodes. And thus uh, it follows, it allows the growth uh, of your big data. Uh, in future, if you are having uh, available resources, you can easily scale them to your requirement with your small slight modifications. And that's how the scalability property will be the add-on for your Hadoop. And also, as I said, uh, the fault tolerance can be easily understood by giving some notifications uh, using your uh, uh, resource manager. It will try to continuously monitor the uh, health condition of all the nodes. And if any, any node is not stable, it will try to report immediately and any fault can be easily understood. And because we are having a name node as the master node, it will try to see the health condition of all the data nodes before giving any task. That's how any fault tolerance can be easily understood for your data node and accordingly an admin will be notified and he will try to set up, uh, check the problem of that node and he will try to give some solutions. Okay, yeah. So these are the uh, important features of your uh, Hadoop. So advantages, yeah. Hadoop is fast, it went quickly. Uh, it can quickly give you a read and write operations. Uh, it can store and process huge amount of data very, very fastly. It is efficient because uh, it automatically distributes the data uh, among all the machines and uh, accordingly, uh, it will try to do some parallel processing. That's why it is efficient. As I said, Hadoop is scalable. You can increase the number of nodes according to the resources what you are having. And also if you're not having proper uh, resources, it can also be 
uh, uh, the some nodes can be removed. For a small, small, small task, we need not to invest lot in Hadoop. If you are having only some terabytes or petabytes of data, then only we can actually go for your Hadoop clusters. Yeah, it is cost effective according to the data need. It can be um, increased compared to your traditional databases. It is a cost effective. And much important thing is Hadoop is open source. Everybody who is having your own requirement, you can install your Hadoop. And uh, if you are having a little bit knowledge on your Java, you can work with Hadoop. And also you are having a, a support through your Apache Software Foundation, where any problems uh, you are having with your Hadoop can be discussed in online forums. And you will be having a uh, complete guide of each tools with respect to the apache.org, uh, where you'll be having a clear uh, documentary document on each and every tool. That's why uh, any any problems with respect to Hadoop installations or Hadoop can be easily uh, processed, easily understood using your discussion forums, and you'll be getting a quick responses with the community of people available. Yeah, so this is what uh, we actually need to discuss uh, in today's session that is about Hadoop ecosystem. As I said, Hadoop is a framework which is bundled with a number of components. Uh, in the initial uh, layers, as I said, in Hadoop version 2 and Hadoop version 3, you are having HDFS, MapReduce, and also cluster resource management, that is YAN. As I said, uh, in our architecture also, we will be having a resource manager. The resource manager is nothing but your YAN, Y-A-R-N, which stands for yet another resource negotiator. That is the abbreviation for your N, uh, YAN. So HDFS stands for Hadoop Distributed File Systems. The three uh, red colored uh, or uh, reddish colored elements here indicate your core components of your Hadoop cluster. And you can see, as I said, an elephant will be representing Hadoop every time that the name of the elephant is only nothing but your Hadoop. Okay, so wherever you see Hadoop, you'll be definitely having some um, elephant logo over there. And also not only elephant, all the components or tools of your Hadoop will be having an animal uh, animal icon link to that. So if you can see the names of the tools uh, with respect to Hadoop are also named as the animal names only. You can see uh, the name called as Apache pig. Uh, that is the name of a pig. It is actually a scripting language. And hive is a uh, bee, honeybee word, which will be used uh, for uh, quickly grabbing some uh, something information. That's why the name has been given as Apache Hive. So you can see uh, different different uh, names accordingly uh, for your uh, tools. So these are the uh, ecosystem elements uh, of your Hadoop. Okay, yeah, let's uh, quickly take one minute of time. So uh, each, each tool in your Hadoop ecosystem is uh, equally important according to the requirement of uh, data what you are having, you will be using different different components or different different tools. So, but the basic things, uh, what you need to have is all the data, whatever you're storing, that will be stored as part of your Hadoop distributed file system only. So anybody who is trying to access uh, any tool uh, of your Hadoop ecosystem, you definitely need to use your HDFS. And all these tools like uh, Uzi, which we actually will be discussing as part of your uh, unit five, it's about your workflow management. So uh, Mahout is machine learning tool developed as part of your uh, Hadoop. Avro is used for your uh, Java server object notation files, JSON files. So likewise, these are some of the tools we are representing as part of your ecosystem, but there are uh, hundreds of tools as part of your ecosystem. So here you can see uh, Apache Flume, which is a data collection tool, which actually collects data from a number of web sources. You just need to connect to your web sources using your Flume, and data will be injected into your Hadoop uh, distributed file system. From there, you can process it according to the tools, whatever you are having. And here you can see one person who is standing called as your zookeeper. He will be, that name indicates, it will try to coordinate all those tools. Uh, if any tool is not working properly or any uh, tool is misbehaving, the zookeeper will be trying to uh, make them stable, and that's how uh, these all animals are. Uh, these all animals are treated as a tools in Hadoop, 
and you'll be having a zookeeper who will try to guide all those things and if any tool is not behave misbehaving properly he will try to control that uh, that's why the name is given as zookeeper so you all need to compare uh, your uh, tools with your animal names that's how it will be easy for us to remember that's why the names are given with respect to your uh, animals so we will try to go through them all, all those things each and every tool tool in tomorrow session uh in tomorrow session we will try to learn about all these components of your hadoop and later uh, we will try to get deep into your concepts okay so with this i just want to uh, end today's session so talking about your uh, hadoop ecosystem